Zika or Geely, I should say, or just began selling the new 001 in Europe. So really good news for them. You guys in Europe get an opportunity to buy what is a very good car. But Zika have just unveiled the truly staggering, I'm going to call it the Zika 001 Plaid. Now, yeah, it's not really a Plaid, but it's got more power than the Tesla Model S Plaid. It's got four motors. It's basically Geely's answer to the Audi RS6, but it's actually a lot faster than an Audi RS6. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Zika 001. I've made so many videos on that car because I'm a big fan of it. It's kind of like a, an SUV, but it's a bit more like a wagon. It's a really practical shaped car. And it's, in my opinion, quite luxurious, really well equipped. I think Geely have done an amazing job with it. And by the way, Zika got the highest customer satisfaction ratings of any brand over the past 12 months in China. So that says something for the brand. It says something for the Zika 001. So what do we know about this car? Well, first of all, it's absolutely ridiculous. It has four motors making 1,000 265 horsepower and it can do a 360 degree tank turn. I'm not really sure the point of that, but anyway, it can do it if you're interested. The Zika 001 FR is the top spec model from Geely's Zika brand and it's been unveiled with an insane amount of power. The actual performance times have been unveiled as well and I do believe them. They don't sound well, they sound ridiculous, but I think that they're actually doable considering the immense power in this vehicle. Now, first of all, this is, I believe, the first production model um, mass manufactured vehicle you can buy with four motors that is not a pickup truck. And well, yeah, imagine driving a car with 1,265 horsepower when you don't have to rev the hell out of it to get that power. I mean, instant. All that power is just instantly available. I think that's kind of kind of a bit scary. But anyway, apparently it can do 2.07 seconds from 0 to 62 miles an hour, 0 to 100. But that's with a rollout. I hate this rollout idea. I think it's kind of confusing. What's the rollout mean? I mean, how much do we deduct from that in order to actually work out the real time? I'm going to guess 0.1 of a second. This can probably do 0 to 62 miles an hour, 0 to 100 in 2.17 seconds, which is, yeah, that's ludicrous. Pun intended, of course. Now that's slightly slower than a Tesla Model S Plaid, which can do it in 1.99 seconds. It's actually a very similar size, this car, to the Plaid as well. But of course, it's more of a station wagony type car. So obviously much more practical than a sedan, which was one of the things I really like about it. What about top speed? Personally, I don't think top speed is really all that relevant, but a lot of people do. The Tesla Model S Plaid can do 200 miles per hour with the optional track package. And apparently you can go faster than that if you're willing to try. So yeah, people have been more than 200 miles an hour in the Model S Plaid, which is kind of crazy. Anyway, the 001 FR, I'm gonna call it the 001 Plaid, it can do around 174 miles an hour. So it doesn't quite have that same top end speed. I'm going to guess Zika could probably put a limiter on the car in order to um, prevent people from killing themselves, possibly something like that, I'm guessing. And now I don't know about you, but I personally absolutely love the look of this car. It just really appeals to me for some reason. And this special model has carbon fiber aerodynamic kit for weight reduction. And of course, to try and uh, improve downforce of the car as well. It's got 10 piston AP racing brake calipers at the front, four piston calipers at the rear. And the reason for that is of course, most of your braking power, about 80% of your braking power actually comes from the front brakes. Plus it has 22 inch performance wheels for better traction, very, very wide tires as well as that. Now, fortunately it has amazing charging speed and it has CATL's new Cheer-in battery, meaning that it has a very high energy density battery, and it's going to give the car an incredible 641 miles of range. But I think that's on the CLTC rating scale. So real world range, you're probably looking at about 500 miles, which is amazing. 
Charging speed. 800 volt charging architecture, much like the Porsche Taycan. It can charge from 10 to 80% on the right charger, of course, in just 15 minutes. So it legitimately can charge at a top speed of 350 kilowatts. Now, you probably know Geely sell cars in the United States. So there's a good chance people are saying this car will come to the US, they say in 2025, very likely. And I've been saying this for a while too. And the reason I've been saying this is because Geely sell Volvo and Polestar in the United States already. So they already have the dealerships already set up. All they're going to do is just ship some of these over to the US. Of course, the problem is there's a chicken tax. So there is a tax on these, but there is a scenario that could work out so they aren't taxed. There is a little loophole that General Motors use. If you manufacture cars in the US and you send them to China and sell them there, you can actually do like a trade-off. So let's say Volvo and Polestar make cars in North America, which they're about to, they're about to make EVs there. If they ship some of those to China, China can ship some back. And as long as things even out, there's no additional taxes to be paid. I think that's a really good deal, a good setup. And it would mean these might be maybe not affordable, but um, within the price range for quite a few people, a lot more people than what can afford a supercar. When you think about it, this is basically a supercar with the practicality of a family car. And that, my friends, is what I love about it. Now, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.